welcome once again, fellow fans of Clash of Clans. Yes, the Clash Aversary continues. Yes, we are up to day six. You could collect up to 18 stars in the challenges, and today, a bit of a surprise. Now, don't worry, I'm gonna keep up with all of the challenges and give you the strategies to get the three stars, even in the builder base. So, if you get a chance, please do subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications and all that good stuff. You guys know I love you, and I do need to address some negativity in, in just a moment. Okay, I'll get to that as we get through this challenge. I also want to remind you about the creator code. It's great for everybody. All creators really appreciate it. Galvanon appreciates it too. That's my favorite code, but again, just make sure you use one code somebody's code because it's free money that supercell is giving away okay now you might think the negativity i'm going to talk about is the builder base it, no it's actually not i i don't mind the builder base obviously i'm not a big fan but they did happen to choose my favorite attacking strategy drop minion drop ships and minions for the builder base challenge and hopefully i know hopefully this is the only one right but anyway you're going to get through this easily if you want to fast forward notice the chapter titles i will give you the best easiest fastest way to win this right close to the end of the video and so you could go ahead if you wish skip ahead don't listen to me droll on about whatever and just get to the challenge right now some people may be straight business minded and that's all they want to do and that's what takes me to today's topic of conversation i've seen a lot of comments okay not a lot a few comments recently of people complaining about the length of my videos and i'll have to tell you it's kind of funny Going back all the way to 2013, it has been a point of contention, and I thought it was kind of interesting because I'll, I'll, I'll be really, really honest with you guys. Back in the early days, people on YouTube in 2013 called you a sellout if you had ads or sponsors. They literally would get upset. Some people would say, that's it, I'm unsubscribing. You are a sellout, Galadon, because you are showing ads or because you got a sponsor. <laughs> Okay, now obviously times have changed and most people realize that a lot of people over here on YouTube do this as a means of income. Some people, including myself, even do it as their primary job. That's right, for the past nine years, this has been my career. And I know that seems kind of strange, being a guy that comes from the business world, I was a marketing director, I worked in banking, and here I am making YouTube videos about a game. It may sound silly, but thanks to you guys, the viewers, I have managed to pay for both of my daughter's college educations and not to mention, you know, keep the lights on around here. Now, sometimes it's easier than others and I don't live in a $10 million super YouTuber mansion like Pokimane or something like that. So, you know, honestly, advertisements and sponsorships make a difference. And I think most of you understand that, but recently I've seen this slight uptick in the annoyed comments that hate the fact that my videos are eight minutes long, right? And I'll be honest with you, Eight minutes is the point that YouTube allows you to put mid-roll ads. Those annoying little pop-ups that show up in the middle of ads are at eight minutes. Any shorter than eight minutes and you can't do it. Longer than eight minutes and then one goes in there. And believe it or not, those little pop-up ads that show up in the middle of videos, they can as much as double YouTube revenue for video creators. So it makes sense to try to have a video that's at least eight minutes long. So yes, am I guilty of sometimes my videos are only eight minutes long? Yes, it's true, but I try to extend them out and I obviously have a gift of being able to talk pretty much forever about pretty much anything. So, you know, here's the weird thing. Now with chapter titles, you can skip ahead. You can go to the content that you really want to see and for the rest of you, and there's quite a few people that say, Galadon, I would listen to you talk about the instruction manual to a 72 Studebaker. Does that even exist? But anyway, you get the point, right? So all camps are around. This video is going to be eight minutes long. And obviously we could have done it in three, but let's go ahead. Okay, here we go. This is the exact instruction to how to destroy this base. The battle machine goes right here. Use his ability after he gets through the wall he can just sit there and pound away once he gets through the wall then go ahead and hit his ability and it's also critical that every time 
his ability is available that you hit it immediately. Do not wait for the game to do it for you. The game will only do it when he's about to go down. So you gotta do it as soon as it's available. Okay, then you're gonna drop the drop ships, one, two, three, four, all kind of in a row, and immediately behind them, the minions. I would suggest using two or three fingers to drag back and forth behind the balloons, all of the minions, until they're all deployed. Then, the baby dragons. Now, of course, in the earlier attacks you saw, I wasn't dropping the right-hand baby dragon on the troll Tesla. You definitely should do that. It does make it a little bit easier. So drop the right-hand baby dragon way over there in the right corner on that Tesla, the other two baby dragons I've been dropping against these two camps on the left-hand side. And the top left baby dragon, if it grabs that hidden Tesla that's to the right of the camp, that can make the difference between a win and a loss. And I'll be honest with you guys, Clash of Clans hates it, but there is always going to be some variance and some luck in these attacks. So it doesn't necessarily mean this is going to work every single time. It's actually an enemy of esports. Those of you that are familiar with the whole esports thing, Gaming companies hate luck because it creates variance and it reduces skill and how important skill is. Because ideally, in any esports competition, skill will determine the winner. That's not always the case in most games, and it's true also in Clash of Clans. There's a certain point, and you'll see it right about here, where there's not a lot left for us to do, right? I mean, we can only hit that battle machine ability right about now and make sure that we keep doing that. Other than that, we just kind of have to hope that variance luck plays in a little bit because the troops are, of course, not going to do the exact same thing every single time. It's impossible unless you're using a computer that you do because you're going to have slight variance as to when and where you drop those troops and spells in the home village and things like that. So, yes, I did manage to win this challenge. What is this, three or four times in a row now? I did that because in part also, remember, I do read every single comment. I saw some complaints from some earlier videos about, I think it was the day two attack that people thought that it took too many tries to get it done. And I'll admit, that one was a little bit high in variance as well, but also in my defense, I went on Facebook gaming, I live streamed one attempt and I succeeded. So if you want to come by, stop by the live streams. I will be doing all of these attacks each and every day. Thank you, Galafam. I hope you appreciate the honesty. You know I appreciate you guys every single moment of every single day. So get out there, make the best of the rest of your day, week, month, and you'll be kind to the people, animals, and the planet. I'll see you back here again tomorrow for more full attacks. As long as we're being completely honest, was the Mega Gem Box real? Hmm?